Hi right, guys, uh, we got uh, Rune Espenson from Denmark, and we're going to be talking about his program, which is XFPC, uh, oh, excuse me, XFCPX, and uh, thanks for coming on the show. How are you doing there, Rune? From Hi, and thanks for having me. <laughs> and uh, we're going to talk uh, a little um, bit about your program. Um, now, originally, this came up when, um, you know, when uh, Final Cut Pro came out, and uh, even the uh, Canon, I think, XF100 is kind of new. I think it came out this year as well, earlier in the year. Yeah. Yeah, that's right. And uh, let me see. Now, there were there was a problem with um, importing um, the MXF file, which is an MPEG-2, into the Final Cut Pro, and there was a uh, like like a, a bunch of different workarounds, and one of them uh, we're going to talk about that first. And one of them was uh, you can use log and transfer from kind of Final Cut Pro Seven, yeah, and uh, some of the earlier versions to import it that way. Um, supposedly, uh, it was also reported Sony XD Cam was used as well, but I heard that was wasn't always successful because it uh, used to mess up the audio. And uh, the third solution, uh, video converter, yeah, which which I use, um, uh, Ansoft is one of the programs I use. Um, but of course, with the one that Rune uses, uh, he developed himself. Uh, it allows him to uh, convert it over um, from an MXF file into, uh, I believe, an MOV file. Uh, could you tell a little bit about your program? There, uh, Rune. Yeah, <clears throat> yeah. Um, actually, uh, I'm I'm not converting it. Uh, the thing is that uh, inside the MXF wrapper that uh, that that Canon provides uh, lies an ordinary almost uh, MPEG-2 stream. Um, and and the problem is that when you're talking video formats, you have to differentiate between uh, the codec uh, which contains the actual data and the wrapper which in this case is uh, the mx okay hey uh, yeah we just lost, lost the uh, uh video portion unfortunately um now we were talking about um the the file format for his program now uh i agree with you i probably used the wrong word i said convert and i know it doesn't really convert the uh, the video, but uh, I guess they call it the container. It rewraps yeah, it in an MO in a MOV file format. Yeah, exactly. Um, the container uh, is is basically the file format uh, that contains the metadata and 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 tells uh, uh, your software on how to interpret that. And uh, the MXF container from 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 well, it's not from Canon, but 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 the MXF container that Canon uses uh, is not recognized uh, by the Final Cut Pro 10, but Final Cut Pro 7 uh, does know it, and uh, and and that is one of the options that you use the lock and transfer from Final Cut Pro 7, which which is a perfectly viable option really. Uh, but of course, it mandates that you have the uh, much more expensive Final Cut Pro Seven, yeah. and that uh, you you can accept the bigger hassle it is. Um, for myself, I come from Final Cut Pro Seven, and I still use it, um, but it's on a different uh, partition, so I need to reboot into the older version of my Mac in order to log and transfer, and then reboot back into Final Cut Pro Ten to use my files. So uh, I kind of decided that that was not really a good option for me. So so I wanted something that was able to convert the MXA files uh, into something that Final Cut Pro 10 would read. And again, I say convert because that's wrong. It's not really what I'm doing. And that is also the reason that I chose not to use the Fox Reel or the OnSoft converters because they are actually reducing the original file quality. So that was what spawned my 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 whole creation of uh, the X X F C P X uh, program, and from what I hear, it's actually very fast because you're not actually changing the uh, the the MPEG two file. You're just con changing the container. So 
Um, from what I understand, it, it's really fast. Yeah, it is. Uh, you, yeah. Well, basically, it 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 takes uh, about twice the amount of time that it would take to just copy the file. So because I'm just reading uh, the raw data and and writing them again to the other format, so there's no calculations and there are no uh, heavy processing. So so yeah, it's 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 pretty fast. It's much faster than actually converting the files. And, and I believe you're you're su- supposedly you're getting a better quality since it's really not converted to from what I understand. Yeah, well, I wouldn't say I'm getting a better quality, but I am retaining the original quality, which was important to me because, again, uh, this this Canon camera brings brings uh, the wonderful um, MPEG-2 uh, codec that is encoded uh, uh, that's encoded in the uh, 422 color space, and um, it's a 15 megabit per second codec, and 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 you get this awesome quality. So I would hate to convert it like the other programs do and, and actually lose this quality before I've even started to edit it. So the philosophy is that, that, that what you record is actually what you're going to edit on. No, oh, okay, I see. I, I didn't realize, okay, you know, you, ret- you retain the same quality, which uh, makes sense. Um, as well, it looks like here I read on your website it uses the FFmpeg codec which i believe is open source is there any reason particular reason why you use that one or it was just open source or yeah well i think um i think you're misunderstanding uh, a bit about what ffmpeg is because ffmpeg is uh, not a codec um it's 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 an open source project that uh that enables you to transcode between different codecs and and so basically it does what uh, what the Fox Reel and the OnStuff converter does. It can take basically any format and put it out to any other format. So if you're familiar with 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 the uh, VLC player from uh, Videoland, it's actually built on this utility. So what it does is that it can take any number of different uh, input streams and it can convert them or transcode them to any number of output streams. And what I'm doing here is that I'm actually not converting the stream, but I'm just using FFmpeg to uh, rewrap it in the uh, mo uh, container that uh, the Final Cut Pro 10 will recognize. Oh, okay. Yeah, I probably. Yeah, I'm not like 100% familiar with you know code codecs or you know video. I, I try my best though. But um, uh, another thing, I th- I think you said the way you do your w- workflow, and that's the reason why you programmed your, your software this way is you, you you have to use the Canon XF utility software um, to be able to use it yeah um, that's uh, that was what I started out with because it was the easiest way to get the job done with that being said it's it's actually turning out to be uh, a bit of a drawback for the utility um, there's actually no reason for me to do it other than the fact that it enabled me to do the workflow that I visualized. Um, but the XF utility from Canon is 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 basically just a necessity to to copy the files from uh, your camera and onto your hard drive and put it in the folder structure that I want to read from my program. So with that being said, I have had uh, quite a few requests of uh, not doing it like that because uh, many people are simply just copying the contents folder from the card into the hard drive. And um, this is probably going to be fixed really soon. So I will put an option that people can just select a folder and it will process all the MXF files from that folder. Uh, so you could uh, omit the use of uh, the the Canon uh, program in time. Oh, okay. Um, and that's another thing for me because I, I would actually have to copy it like twice. I'd have to go into the folder and then convert it again and then input it so I'd have like, you know, two different copies. But, you know, it, it's, you know, I know you're doing it by you originally by your workflow, which which there's nothing wrong with that. But And uh, now, okay, it looks like I was going to ask. Well, well, the thing is. Yeah, go ahead. I think we have a bit of lack. Okay. 
on uh, the communication. Uh, but, but but the reason that I'm doing this is because uh, I actually come from a, a photography uh, background, and 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 the base philosophy here is that you will always retain your original raw material. So this is why I'm kind of enforcing this workflow because the the EXIF utility will 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 take a backup of your entire card and store it on your hard drive and and the way that I work and the way that I believe maybe wrongfully that people should work is that that you keep a backup of your raw material always and then you will take work copies from that oh, so the I idea see. is that you use the EXIF utility to back up the card and then you use my utility to make working copies from that backup uh, so 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 this way you will always have uh, your original material. Oh, okay, yeah, I see. You know, that's probably really the the correct way to do it. I I I know I probably don't do it the best way. So, um, and uh, let me see now. Um, actually, I think I was the one we were t we were um, originally we were discussing this on Apple's website on their forum uh, about all this and. I do know that um, Apple released uh, when they released the update to Final Cut Pro 10 that um, they did supply a Canon SDK for the to be able to um, uh, camcorder manufacturers to make their own plugins. Now um, I, I think we, we kind of talked about it on the website, but um, you you were considering maybe writing a plugin perhaps. For the future, but you know, I know you were you, you were still working out some other details. Yeah. Um, well, first off, if if anyone could direct me to any information regarding the SDK, I would I would simply love it because I've tried a few Google searches. To be honest, I haven't done extensive searches, but I can't really seem to find it. With that being said, if I could get access to the SDK, uh, the the optimal solution for me would, of course, be to provide an actual plugin that uses the same core as uh, XFCPX does, uh, but plugs in probably uh, to the Final Cut Pro 10 program, so you could use the import feature directly uh, from within the program. Um, but I can't really seem to find the SDK, so uh, so I'm kind of stuck on that. So if anyone has mm -hmm. any pointers, uh, feel free to contact me with 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 a link to uh, to that information. And I did the same thing because I've seen a lot of news all over the internet about an SDK, and I and I tried to find it myself. I looked in on my computer uh, on the website, so it seems to be a kind of a mystery for right now as far as making the uh, um, development and software. Yeah, and 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 it kind of annoys me because I'm not making any promises. But if I had the SDK, I would definitely uh, take a look and see if I could do anything with it. But but for now, I just like you read the update that there supposedly is an SDK available somewhere. Um, I registered as an Apple developer at some point, but I can't really seem to find anything about it. Um, so I'd be happy to look into it, but but I need the SDK. Oh, okay. Um, let me go ahead and finish this up, but I want to get some um, background information. I think you're primarily, you, you do um, uh, like uh, pic picture editing photos. Is, is that your main work? Yeah. Uh, I actually come from, from, from a background as a, a, a software developer. So, so this is why this utility even came to life because developing the utility was was pretty simple um, but uh, uh, currently I'm a uh, still photographer that is uh, if not moving to then at least embracing the video aspect because with the release of the SLR video there's this convergence that everybody is talking uh, so much about that that the customers are asking if I can do video too, and 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 this is what triggered the idea of me buying the uh, the Canon XF100, and so I'm 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 not moving to video, but I'm embracing it more and more. And, oh, and okay. when I, I hit this roadblock of 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 not being uh, of not being able to use my camera with with the new Final Cut Pro, then then the utility came oh. into birth. 
Um, how about uh, do you have a DSLR camera where you're uh, you can take video as well? I don't know if that's if that's an option for you, but yeah, uh, I own uh, Canon gear, so I have both the uh, 5D Mark II and the 7D, and I started to shoot a lot of video uh, with those, and 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 they do give excellent quality if used right. But a lot of the type of work that I do demand for much more run and gun shooting, and for this you need autofocus, uh, which you don't have on on the current uh, breed of DSLR cameras. And uh, also, I wanted the codec so I would be able to tweak uh, my video more because the DSLR is 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 basically like like a JPEG. This means that you get this packed file that is out of the camera and either you get it right in the camera or you don't get it right at all because you have very limited options of color correcting and 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 reducing noise and stuff like that okay um now okay uh your website i believe is pika dot dk uh p-i-k-a yeah. dot dk and yeah. uh for you guys that that are interested in the program, which is uh, XFP or XFCPX, uh, if you own a, a Canon XF100 into Final Cut Pro 10, and um, also you know, donate if possible. Uh, that way, he can maybe uh, have justification to uh, develop these programs as well. Maybe even a uh, native plugin for Final Cut Pro if you can ever find the SDK, which is seems to be hard to find uh, as well. Uh, you have any closing remarks there, uh, Rune, for us? Yeah, uh, yeah, I have uh, one short one and, and one a bit longer one. The short one is that uh, while I haven't tested it, uh, if you own the Canon XF300, which, which is the uh, older and bigger brother of the XF100, supposedly uh, the utility should work uh, just fine there as well. So that's good news. And um, about the utility itself, um, I was actually quite stumbled that, that Canon didn't seize the opportunity when, when Apple supposedly re, uh, released the SDK. So I was hoping that Canon would have provided a utility by now, which is why the, the further development of uh, XFCPX has uh, stagnated. But uh, obviously they didn't. So yeah. um, while I'm making no promises, uh, it is my definite intent to uh, to uh, continue to uh, develop uh, the XFCP program and uh, make it uh, so you're not uh, dependent on the XF utility and uh, preferably, if, 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 if ever possible at all, I would love to make uh, a plugin directly for the F FCP uh, tin program. So that's it. Um, as I mentioned on my website, it's, it's, uh, time is limited and I can't make any promises, but I do have every intent in the world to, to continue on developing this utility, seeing as Canon can't really get the finger out of there. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, definitely. So, yeah. Um, so, uh, yeah, that's it basically. Uh, okay, thanks. Actually, it was very interesting. Learned, uh, I learned some codexes and stuff. I was, I know I was saying a few of the wrong things. So, uh, um, uh, see you later. Yeah.